Jeff, the viewers at home will be dying to know exactly yeah. what is it that you bring to the show. Jeff's contributions are immeasurable. <laughs> he was our rock. Can you <laughs> Oh, that was just a nightmare. Fuck. What? A rhythmic beeping of the heart monitor brings you slowly back to consciousness. Opening your eyes, you're greeted by a semicircle of concerned faces. A family by, you, by, your, <coughs> a family by your side, a reassuring familiar sight in the new surrounding. You blink a few times to clean the sleep from your eye and bring everyone. To focus. Why the fuck in the hospital? You feel a hand on yours, gentle but reassuring. Some there with you as always. Their expressions, understandably concerned, is somehow more affectionate than ever. We know you'll be okay. Never doubt it for a second. And if I ever see that boss man, you squeezes their hands and then you got win. The worry line on Sam's forehead fades up. I think that Sam was saying... Oh. I'm still broken as poor! I want, I want money! <laughs> Lord knows you both got enough to be anxious about with, without your health being thrown into the mix, yeah. With a final smile at them, you turn to the rest of your family. Just as you feel Susie's absence, you notice Charlie fidgeting, clearly trying not to look worried. As soon as you turn to look at him, you can see Charlie tense up. His concern clears on his face. So you're definitely good, right? <laughs> he finally asks, quickly looking away. Of course I am, buddy. There's nothing to worry about. Leave the blank. <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. Charlie looks at you and grins. One of those inferior smiles that spreads around the room. Spreads around the room, sorry. It's always good to have him in your corner. Your smile fades as you notice your mother staring listlessly out the window. Listlessly? Why? Staring out the window, eh? Despite all your best efforts, she's not been doing well lately. Are you okay, mom? Your mother starts, your call clearly struck her out of her reverie. She turns to you and smiles, and you're grateful to see the increasingly rare recognition in her eyes. Yes, there, of course. How are you feeling? You smile warmly and nod, but before you can respond, a doctor bust bustles in and ushers oh and ushes everyone's out. She asks you for what feels like the hundredth time how you're failing. Surprisingly well, all things considered. Excellent! There is no sign of any real damage. Just a bit of a shock to the old system, pardon the pun. She smiles. Not that we recommend you to do anything like that again, of course. After a couple of days at after a couple of days rest at home, you should feel right as rain. She turns to leave but stops at the door. Oh, and private room and care. The doctor gestures to your room, which you now notice looks rather expensive. Has all been paid for by a Mr. Bossman. He left those flowers and said not to worry, and not to take the rest, uh, and to take the rest of the week off. He will see you Monday, apparently. Oh, yeah, that sounds like the least he could do. Yeah, that's nice. Thank you. Thank you, Bossman. That's a couple nice days. Burden to bear. You came to home from particularly late shift to find the kitchen light still on, which isn't normal, uh, normally a good sign. Everyone's usually in bed by now. Softly opening the kitchen door, you find Sam sat at the table. Bills and papers are throwing in front of them, as well as what looks to be their second pack of biscuits. Second pack of biscuits? That sounds serious. 
they give you a quick kiss and you take a seat next to them. I didn't, I didn't know how to read those things sometimes, that's so confusing for me. Sam frowns and goes back to the bill they're holding. Hi sweetheart, just looking at the numbers again. They look to the door to the pantry, now converted into your mother's bedroom. Well, we've been doing our best, but I think Cassandra really needs a nurse to look after her. Suddenly the bills are all you can see. Yeah, right. I've been staring at the numbers all night. Tears in her eyes. Sam takes your hand. There's just no way we can afford it. Ah, I'm sorry. The kitchen table swings. Maybe get to work or something. Sam stands up and pulls you into a firm embrace. But all you can think is your mother and how you can't afford to help her. What would you dad be thinking now? Is this the utopia advanced promise? You stare at the door to your mother's makeshift room. Tomorrow we'll need to tell the kids and then book an appointment to the transition center. What else could we do? Have we done? Mm, that's sad. Can I just go to work? I don't want that sad story. A letter home. Sam's out with work tonight and Charlie's staying at a friend's. The house is yours. You order a takeaway, have a couple of drinks and decided to relax in front of the TV. Not a great selection tonight, but surely something to watch. You feel like a laugh comedy. Sam's not here, but you can still watch a horror without them. You want to switch off actually to... Let's get some comedy, maybe just to get our, like, you know, humor out a bit, uh, but I don't think it's gonna work. The humor is a bit hit and miss, but the jokes about the kiln... Kiln? I don't know. Has you bend double in, la in laughter, in laughter, whipping a tear from your eye. You spy something, reflecting the light of the TV under the coffee table. Curious, you reach down and bring it out into the light. And as you pick it up, you remember the note Sam left for you. Hey sweetheart, Charlie lost Susie's present. Would you mind to look for it tonight? X. As you hold it closer, you're surprised to find the gift's actual and engraved lighter for Chippy. She claims the nicknames affectionate, but Charlie still scrolls every time she said it, says it. You're not sure Sam would approve it. The accompanying note from Susie explains, Irkistan has a long tradition of glorifying the act of starting fire. Thought you like it. Don't do anything stupid, Susie. Hopefully it's just a souvenir, not a new pastime he's picked up or about to pick up. Yeah, yeah let's hope so. It's nice that she thought of him. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Can I go to work? I don't want to have those problems. I just want to work. Just die in my working place. Been, been living in the paradise. What's... Uh oh Oh yeah, so... Yeah. Up your weapons of optical destruction and get out! You realise you're beginning to sound... Crazy, I need I it, Cam. Stay where you are, Cam. Jenny? This is not Jenny's decision, Jeremy. All yours. What the hell? All right, I'll talk to Bucks for you. Oh, good! You can tell him I'll return his wife's casserole dish at our dinner next week. Why is burned? Jenny. I'm sorry, Kath, you're gonna have to leave. What the hell is happening over here? Guys, come on! Letting it go to your head. She nearly blinded Ten me. Ten seconds, everybody! I thought we were part of a team these days. Things are better, Jeremy, you know that. Just stop being so Three, high five, mighty and do your job. Four, oh, three, three. Burned. Don't tempt me. Let's go! Good evening, I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy Dawson. Our main headline is tonight. The establishment strikes back. The World Council has agreed today to impose punitive sanctions on the people of this country. The sanctions, which are broad-ranging, include restrictions on the supply of oil and gas, food, clothing, 
and even some medicines. Let's go but how can we react? We ask the public. What are your reactions to the sanctions? Oh. Well, I think it's fucking outrageous. <laughs> I'm on these insulin. Am I supposed to get her transitioned? What's the government doing about it? Hey? Uh. What's the government doing about it? Thanks, Patrick. <laughs> Important stuff. Controversial Prime Minister Julia Salisbury <laughs> attempted to assuage growing public concerns with the following official statement released earlier today. The international sanctions declared against this country today by the World yeah. Council remind us that now, more than ever, we need to come together as a yeah. team. Since coming to power, we have eradicated poverty and, as a consequence, seen crime fall to levels previously thought impossible. Our schools, hospitals and youth clubs are thriving and our transition centres have enabled many thousands to unburden their loved ones with dignity. In any sane world, we would be held up as a model to emulate. Where is Evidently, the thing? this is not that world. <laughs> the privileged few have lobbied and now they are striking uh -huh. back. But we will not cower before their tantrums. And we encourage other progressive nations of the world to continue to trade, visit, and share their cultures with ours. Do not be afraid. We have more friends than we can count. We are a team, now more than ever. And this team is on your side. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. I almost believed you. Reassuring stuff. But what do Let's you, the public, sad. think of our refreshingly different government? Sad. Robin Short found out. I was wondering if you could tell me what you think <laughs> of the government. What? That shower of iridescent pricks? <laughs> Punishing success and rewarding laziness? They're taking this country down the bloody swanny. Ah, and it's not yes. just me that thinks so. My wife Iris, she agrees. Over to you, fellas. Global mm. mega corporation Remington Fist today announced that trials have successfully completed on their groundbreaking male contraceptive product, <laughs> Responsibility. <laughs> the drug has been passed by the government for general release. Smart. But the small print warns that, in rare cases, sad, sad, side sad. effects can include blurred vision, enlarged genitalia, and increased risk of stroke. <laughs> what? <laughs> the double entendre intended. But what do you, the public, think of Sophia Remington's latest venture? Sad. Patrick? Would you take the male contraceptive <laughs> pill? No, mate. Her body, her baby, her problem. Yeah! <laughs> Fucking hell. Pipers at the gates of dawn. Communities in the capital this morning found themselves bad. surprised and amused by the latest stuff from the popular project problem. group Disrupt. Silent protests were held outside underground Sad. stations throughout the capital, bringing a pleasantly surreal quality to the morning commute. Unless, like me, you have a phobia of mimes. But how do we, Mine? as a country, really feel about Disrupt? Robin? Sad. Can I ask your opinions on Disrupt? Are those the guys in black with the orange fist thing? That's right. Can I be honest? Of course. <laughs> this is journalism. They scare me a bit. Feast or famine? Yeah. The successful doctors David Wong and Ingrid Sforsborg and Horgan today yeah. announced their first successful harvest in Dante's tank. Although they can currently only grow a few fungal strains, the oh, scientists seem to be staying positive, as the following picture shows. The undauntable scientists chose to try and survive in the cave right. system while the complex rescue That's operation important. inches forward up here on dry land. Let's hope they're like strong enough. But with Advance planning to spend an eye-watering amount of public money on the rescue craft, we asked Patrick Bannon to find out what we should all be thinking about the accelerating costs. <laughs> This rescue is going to be <laughs> expensive. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I don't want to say in cool, mate, but fuck them. Oh. I mean, if they found some rare rocks down there, would I have got a share of the profits? Nah, of course not. So why am I expected to pay now? It's all gone tits up. Are you going to pay? <laughs> are you? I'm, I'm a joint. I think of... Uh, oh, God. I am not a number. Application is like finally that guy. open today for the new advanced team membership cards, a scheme by the government to allow What's fast access to the missing that thing. I'm missing one of those cassettes. Daily. The team membership cards are entirely sad. voluntary, but will be recognised as legal identification by all major sad, organisations, sad, including sad. the police, banks and, rightly, pubs and bars. And of course, there's no charge, Jeremy. That all seems too good to be true. Well, you've always been a cynic. But most importantly, what should you, the public, think about the new team membership cards? Well, I think I thought it was a dream, so maybe that's Team why. membership cards? Absolutely bloody not. 
It's the thin <laughs> end of the wedge, isn't it, Iris? Well, I... First it's, can I see your identification, sir? And then it's, would you mind bending over the table, sir? So, <laughs> Sergeant State Educated and Constable Regional Accent here can stick their truncheon up your berry hair! Oh, crikey! They should call <laughs> them what they are! They're bloody ID cards! Well, oh, for Christ's <laughs> sake, what is it, Iris? Oh, I'm really uh -oh. not happy out or not! I'm so sorry. Oh, no, no. Crikey. <laughs> yeah. And finally tonight, Ugh. back of the net, prominent sports personality Johnny Hounsleeves and his fiancée Tiffany Lamour were spotted out today doing a little shopping for what many are already calling the greatest wedding ever. We can Sad. only assume that Tiffany's latest show, My Teenage Secretions, has sold better than expected. Oh, those, those are the by guys the I think from things, the whole yeah. affair is about to become more expensive than Lil yeah. C's shoe collection. I don't know who that is. But what should your Sad. opinion be of this extravagant Sad. display of wealth? Disgusting. <laughs> Your thoughts <laughs> next. Later tonight, in a break from our usual responsibilities, Jeremy will be taking popular rapper Jason to task to for to his street credibility. And Outside of the, like, you know, camera views. It's got theatre critics buzzing with anticipation. That's all coming Three, up on tonight. Three, two, one. News. But we'll need a new cath otherwise... Dry and leaking. How delightful for you. You, talking about? you don't want to know. Um, look about before. Don't worry. First tonight, let's return to our main story. With the shine coming off Advance's popularity... And the honeymoon period pretty much over. The National Nightly News has spared no expense in bringing you the response to today's sanctions from across the continent. Joining us to help digest this shocking development are Prime Minister Peter Clement from his home in Lanfordshire. Good evening, Jeremy. And from Urkestan Foreign Minister Ivan Vodovich. It's a great pleasure. Uh, Miss Wolf, you like... And from Svenland, Minister of Mojo, Björn. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Minister Vodovich, your country pushed especially hard for these sanctions. Any regrets? My only regret is I was not able to see the face of my old friend Peter Clements when the results of the vote were announced. <laughs> As you say, he has one up in your bottoms. In Finland, we try not to gloat, actually, because it's seen as really ugly and dangerous to some small creatures, yeah? Oh, don't worry, Minister. <laughs> Ivan and I go way back. He's a wind-up merchant who can't put for shite. <laughs> Pete, He's just uh, trying to get a rise out of me. You're like a man who load dissidents onto train to labor Stop camp. fucking swearing all the time. Of country, but to make up the size of his tiny penis. <laughs> None the vodka, either. No more than you. I see you on election night with mouth like man thinks he's singing beauty. Ah, <laughs> yeah. But actually he's squealing like a pig in hands of Randy Big Dick Farmer. <laughs> actually, we Swinlandians, we aren't size obsessed. We value passion, yeah? Like the way we spoke up for Mr. Clement's country at the World Council. That's all well and good. And high and mighty, but where were you for the actual vote then? A finger in each other's fjords. <laughs> Actually, that's kind of racist. And if you must not, I've had like a really tiring afternoon and my tongue is very thoughtful. Prime Minister, with advances popularity on the way... <laughs> you don't I... have to bring that up at every given opportunity, you know. <laughs> Peter, he's like man who thinks he's sniffing flowers in beautiful glaze. <laughs> But he's actually standing under outlaw pie from Shit Factory at Shit Flushing time on day of village festival of shit. <laughs> I tell him this at 19th hole. Minister Vodovich, what are you doing? Left to their own devices, people will behave so. Did you just clean your nipples? Nature of all beasts. However, in this country, we think our citizens are capable of being more than beasts. Uh, pathetic idealism. <laughs> Minister Björk, Svenland has long had radically different traditions and culture from the rest of the world, and yet it peacefully coexists. Why do you think that is? Well, you know, I think maybe the world sees us as something they can actually spiritually be enlightened to, yeah? Yeah, or maybe it's the orgy houses. <laughs> Sometimes, when foreign dignitaries come to visit us, they're actually quite sceptical, actually, actually. So we take them actually, on a visit actually. to the Donga 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 district and show donga, them what the progressive enlightened society looks like, yeah? Uh, shit don't bull. Spend them with like woman who thinks she make 
best cake in village hot baking contest. <laughs> and then when she sliced it open, it just full of piss and cum. Uh, uh, I, that's, well, that's just really gross, actually. <laughs> Sperm in a teeny tiny country with population <laughs> smaller than number of people. Peter Clements is sex with his teeny tiny penis. It's not all about size, actually. Yes, that's what Peter Clements always claim. <laughs> I'm talking about population size. And I'm talking about Peter Clement's teeny tiny... Oh, fuck <laughs> off, Ivan! Oh, Prime Minister, please. Look, it's so easy to sit on your pile of money and gloat, isn't it, pal? You're a shite leader. A fucking god-awful golfer. And quite frankly, as my old <laughs> man used to say, you're a bit of a cunt. Prime yeah. Minister, please! It's you who is cunt. Minister Vodovich, please. Your people are fucking starving, pal. We will see how well fed your people are <laughs> when the sanctions start to bite. <laughs> you think your man like big scary wolf person terrorizing village when actually a pathetic goose person searching for <laughs> for tiny dropped off penis. Why are you so obsessed about small cocks, mate? In Finland, we believe like the size of your penis isn't as important as the love it contains, yeah? Oh, <laughs> fuck, fuck off, yeah. Okay, if everybody could just calm down. <laughs> Nobody likes him. Smuggle this guy. They are like man who fuck pig and somehow it give her birth to beautiful lady girl. But now you start to see it, sir. The people never happy. It never enough. It's yeah. certainly true that advances popularity. He's on the fucking <laughs> way. Yeah, let's go with this bollocks again, shall we? Actually, you know, you know what? Nah, fuck this. I'm done with this. <laughs> uh, Prime Minister, uh, please don't storm out. No, uh, no. Uh, I've uh, heard uh, enough uh, of you, uh, Mr. Jeremy Donaldson, and yes, snide aside. You think you could make a better job of things, do you? Because it's not that fucking easy! He'll be the best! You, Look at him! Your channel is a fucking disgrace! Oh, that You insinuate nice. and edit against us and pick your headlines so people don't trust us. The sooner you roaring monsters are taken into public ownership, the happier everyone in this country will be! Ooh. Well, um, we've not got long until the adverts, so... Um... I'm, 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 I'm sorry for the outburst, Mr. Fuck Mr. off! No. Julia thinks very highly of you. And I know you're <laughs> not the one making the editorial decisions. Uh -huh. you have it's me. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> Fuck My you. My work here is done. <laughs> I like man who happy <clears throat> lie down with fatty, drunk, easy girl from Village Inn, who discover in morning <laughs> he wake up next to beautiful news reporter lady. You know, I think it would be uh -huh. a terrible shame here if the people of your country were to suffer because of teenage grudges and personal rivalries. Yeah. Thank you, Prime Minister. This country, this wonderful, civilized, creative, uh, inventive country. Yeah, exactly. We're not scared of these sanctions. There's no wolves at our door, only the best of people striving to help out. So no, Ivan, <laughs> we're not afraid. In fact, I doubt we'll lose a wink of sleep because we're strong and we're well resourced. <laughs> And we don't back down to bullies. And oh. on that note, we have to wrap up. Ministers, Prime Minister, thank you for joining us. We'll be back after these messages. Drink! Back. <laughs> Peter, you're so easy. Uh, so many buttons to push. Piss off, Ivan. <laughs> I'll see what grains this weekend. No, I've got meetings. Some tossers impose sanctions on the country. Well, shit. I mean, wow. <laughs> so that happened. Roaring monsters. Public ownership. You two are like a couple who think you are king and queen of village, but <laughs> actually you are just puppets on the screen of evil Simple. shitty hand puppet What? <laughs> New government censorship should show up in blue. Same as regular censorship. Uh -huh. Keep an eye out for the advanced blue waveform. Why? I don't want to. Ah, uh, yeah! We win your kids. Sorry! Oh, this is dead. Near the Crown Prince report. Well, what are you Megan? doing here? This is Jeremy, and he'll be interviewing you. 
Oh. Yo, <laughs> yo, yo. Yo, thanks for having me on your show, man. It's, it's quite all right. Yo, just a quick one. You're not going to ask me about the chimp, are you? Live in what? 10 seconds. Because he put chimp? that get up on himself. I'm just saying. <clears throat> going in five, four, four three, three, two, one. Welcome back. I'm Megan Wolf. Later, we have an exclusive first look at a theatrical sensation everyone's going to be talking about. But first, it's time to go over to the culture spot with lovely old Jeremy Donaldson, who's joined by a very special guest. Jeremy. Thanks, man. Hey. I have the honour and privilege of being joined by hip-hop royalty. He's been called the son of the streets and the father of truth. Uh -huh. uh, not sure how that works, but whatever. Let's <laughs> welcome Jesus. Hey, thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, it's a real honour to be here on your show, The News. You know, as a kid on the streets, I used to watch you for a window at the shop, so to be here right now is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> okay. You've had quite the journey to be here today. Can you tell us about it? Well, you know, I try not to... Um, well, you know, the past is the past, and I don't like to dwell on it. I understand. You're but, yeah, man, the streets is all I remember, like... My mother donated me to a charity shop soon after I was born. Oh. Elderly lady took pity on me. You know, she let me sleep on a pile of crime fiction until I taught myself how to walk. Wow, that's uh, <laughs> quite the childhood. And she died, like, died tragically. Right there in my arms, man. OK. You know, I remember a tear falling as she laid there next to the used homeware. And in that moment, I became a child of the streets. I was just 18. Months old. <laughs> what a tale. What a tale. Mm. You're known for your direct and honest lyrics. Was your style informed by your troubled past? Oh, like I said, I, uh, I try not to talk about it. It's just, um, it's just too hard. Of course. I... But my first album is about the story yeah. of the first four times I stole, so I wouldn't starve. A small group of infants came to see me as their de facto leader. They call me Mr. Cheese Slice. Anyway, we were like a family. So it would seem. <laughs> Recently, you've been quite outspoken about the government. Yeah, fuck the government. Fuck advance. Fuck Peter Clement. What is it that you object to so... I think I'll be... Well, the blue you know, they stole from us. They're taking our money and spending it, man. Redistributing it? Actually, homelessness has been all but eliminated in the last couple of months. So? Surely that's gotta be nice. They're gonna be chasing on your red ones. <clears throat> yeah, nah, of course, man. Very much so. I just mean, like, like, why do I have to pay for it, you know? You don't. People right. have been rehoused on property seized from the historically wealthy. Mm. And that couldn't have been you, could it? Look, yeah. I worked hard to be here. I built this from nothing. And I deserve to be rewarded for that. Would you say you worked harder than, say, <laughs> a farmer or a care worker? Yeah. I don't know. But if people are taking something from my music, choose to value it, buy it, who's to say I don't? And no one can take that away from me. <laughs> Not even to help, say, vulnerable children? Mr. Cheese Slice? What is it you're trying mm -hmm. to say? I just don't Come understand on, destroy you him. yourself politically. I mean, is it <laughs> ideological or is it tactical? Well, it's more of a... Or maybe like, it's hereditary. Stop trying to tie me in knots with your words, Jeremy. I let the music speak for itself. And the people <sighs> agree with me. Well, that remains to be seen. But you have given me a very easy segue out of a conversation that I promise good. you was like much more painful for me than it was guy. for you. So because here he is with his hit song... Mrs. Ludlow's Tears. Oh, no. Um, I'm going to do something a little different. It's a new single I've been working on. Oh. So this is uh, unapproved, is it? Yeah. You love it. Oh, fuck. Excellent. Don't worry, we've got okay. a state-of-the-art censorship system. What's the worst that could happen? So here he is with a new song. Aren't we lucky? It's Jesus! But first, you're going to pay off. You're gonna pay back.
Well, oh. we're all different races from many different places. At any given moment, only one could be the greatest. So you can feel elation from your participation. Still two leaders in this motherfucking nation. Now we're getting sanctioned, talking about expansion. Why does Julie is require a massive fucking mansion? So fuck all your schemes. I don't need your freaky team, and I don't need your help to achieve my fucking dreams. So don't make a fuss when you find you're one of us Get every single one of you's a bit Jesus And you can call me crazy Cause no one ever pays me But I won't waste a lifetime being motherfucking lazy I may be inventive, my taste may be expensive But why would I get out of bed with no fucking incentive Although it's contravention of your obvious intention I like to eat a little of the fruits in my invention You make us the same, but we're not all the same All our dreams, all our schemes, all our means are not the same the best of the praise of the press of the wave Cause we're only equal people when we're motherfucking slaves Take this fact, gonna stain it red Gonna slam it into Peter Clemens motherfucking head Cause he's big as shit, he's got a job, he's unfit for It's time to stall the car with the motherfucking bitch for So this is for the snub ones, the push and the shove ones The folks to feel the burden of their motherfucking loved ones Ones who had plenty like a motherfucking Bentley The ones who now finding that their bank accounts are empty The ones with aspiration, who had to flee a nation The ones who built a business out of dreams of perspiration There's all sorts of people, the good and the evil It only takes a glance to see we're not all equal you make us the same, but we're not all the same All our dreams, all our schemes, all our needs are not the same And the best of the frames, of the press of the ways Cause we're only equal people when we're motherfucking slaves Gonna take this fight, gonna stay in it red Gonna slam it into Peter Clemens' motherfucking head Cause he's big as shit, he's got a job he's unfit for He's got to stall a puzzle with a motherfucking bitch for Get out of your seats, get your asses in the streets Set a fire in the building, let him feel some fucking heat Say you hate to go get us Just with the best letters And burn them on the powers of advances fucking letters Gonna take this fast Gonna stain it red Gonna slam it into Peter Clemens' motherfucking head Cause he's fake as shit He's got a job he's unfit for His time is torn apart So we the motherfucking bitch for Chase that dream You don't need a fucking team And advances little chances Aren't as harmless as it seems Cause they're stale and corrupt Then you ain't Fuck the censorship! Jay's us there with his new song. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio. Back. I'm sorry. Um, I might not agree with you, but I'd just like to offer you an apology. I've just been told that there was some kind of issue upstairs. An attempt was made to censor some of your lyrics. What? Are you joking? I'd just like to say to you and everyone at home that this was a mistake. This is absolutely ridiculous. I cannot believe this. I didn't censor you, don't worry. News, we pride ourselves on remaining neutral, unbiased and independent of any outside interference. You have my word. Got it. We will never censor ideas. Back to you, Megan. <laughs> Well, a bit of dangerous language there, sorry about that. <laughs> well, thank you to little Jeremy Donaldson for providing our culture spot. Coming up, we'll be speaking to a couple of familiar faces about their upcoming dramatic outing. Don't go <laughs> away. We'll be right back after this. That's the ad. Just to remind you, using that old VCR. No, no, it's a ridiculous. Two drop on the table. Last ad break. It's just a mix-up, I'm sure. Now, if you come with me, I really do have to ask you to leave this. My father's going to hear about this. I understand. This is unbelievable, Megan. I don't know what you're talking about, Jeremy. Oh, stop. 
Okay. Look at him. If we could just get you in position. <laughs> oh, say no more. Say no more. Oh, wait. Um, Jeremy, you remember <laughs> My, Mr. <Alger>. My boys! <laughs> and Mr. Ooh. Harris, and this is Miss yeah. Rachel. What? Philippa, please. We're back together again, eh? Who'd have thought it? Uh. Perhaps a low order <laughs> Yes, it is awfully exciting, isn't it? <laughs> right, okay then. We're going live in ten seconds, opening on camera one. Okay, okay. Try. Curse Five, four, three, Welcome back, and no, you're not mistaken, sitting across from us are some very familiar faces. You really are too kind, Megan. It was only a yoghurt commercial, but I'm still proud of it. Here to talk about his new show, we're joined by national treasure Tommy Harris, the national theatre's Philippa Rayne, and national deficit Jeff Algebra. It's so lovely to have you all. Um, Tommy, would you like to tell us about the show? You know what? I'd bloody love to. It's about me. It's about yeah. my life. Oh, and yeah. where did the idea come from? So, right, picture this. Um, their legs are kimbo, mid-session, sweat is pouring out of me like an immense hog. And then Cindy comes in, she says, well, she says, Peter's on the phone. That's Peter Clement, the Prime Minister. Yeah, yeah, Peter's actually a really good mate of mine. Oh, is he really? Yeah, yeah, no, he comes to training sometimes. He's actually a pretty good goal sweeper. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, Pete, he says, he says, Toby, can you... He thinks my name's Toby, see? He says, how would you like to... Spread your message of team spirit and cooperation across this fractured nation. How would you like to really make a difference in these desperate times? What did you say? Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> so, Jeff, the question on everyone's lips is, what in God's name are you doing here? Ah, <laughs> well, after the success of my debut work uh, and all the people that I played, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew that I had a, a career in theatre. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I've always been an admirer of Tommy from afar. So when my manager phoned and said that I'd been offered the gig as director, I was ecstatic. <coughs> I whipped my trousers off and got straight to work. Why <laughs> did you do that? I, I do all my best work with my trousers off. Yeah, I've been told that too. No, no, I wouldn't say so. Right, Tommy, um, sorry, would you just <laughs> give us a sense of what the show is actually about? Uh, it's about how hard it's been for me and some of the struggles that I've faced. It, it like, really <laughs> getting to the heart of how tough it is to be me. I call it Tommy Harris, Jesus, that was hard. Mm. Uh, we actually have some clips of the process of the show. Um, would you mind telling us what's going on here? Yeah, so the show is, is, is built around uh, two things that are very important to me. Uh, it mixes scenes from my life uh, as well as epic fantasy retellings of scenes mm -hmm. from my life. But Dad, you promised you'd come to my graduation. <laughs> I'm sorry, son. You're an embarrassment. But, Dad, you promised you'd come to my graduation. Back, demon! Back to the hells! <laughs> wow. Philippa, um, what's it been like co-starring with Tommy Harris? I've always dreamed of treading <laughs> the boards at medium-scale regional theatres, Megan. And for once, this show really gives me something to sink my teeth into. What's different about this show, then? Tommy, uh... And Mr. Harris's show really lets me show my tremendous range as an actor. I've always <laughs> suffered from typecasting, forced to play the same <laughs> tired characters in every god-awful yoghurt advert or godforsaken soap opera or, god forbid, a pantomime. But, you know, this, what this, the hell? You this show has you're... really let me just, yeah. just go there. Jeff, the viewers at home will be dying to know exactly yeah. what is it that you bring to the show? Good question. Uh, I think these guys <laughs> would agree with me when I say that it's my, uh, my steady hand <laughs> on the tiller, my arm round the shoulder approach that's really brought the production from strength to strength. Absolutely right. Jeff's contributions are immeasurable. <laughs> he was a rock. Yeah. Can you give us a sneak peek of anything else that might be in the show? Yeah, all sorts, yeah. Uh, uh, we... yeah. We've got lots of exclusive first-hand experiences of Tommy's time in the underground sports oh. boards. And some epic fantasy retellings of Tommy's time in the underground sports board scene. Eee. Oh. You'll never take the sacred pass! And... What? Am I writing saying this was 
officially commissioned by the government? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> all, all paid for by the taxpayer, which, you know... To, to no! Honest, ...is actually a lifesaver, really. Yeah, I think it's fair yeah. to say that without Advance's support, we'd have had to cut oh, the finale. Yeah. Which, frankly, would have been a travesty. Oh, God, Jesus Christ! <laughs> what the...? Goodness, and you do this every night? Absolutely. It's a metaphor. For what? Death. What? Then the public are footing the bill, are they? <laughs> Too bloody right they are. Between the cost of my tour bus and the dry cleaning of my ties, what? I'm barely scraping a profit here. Amazing. And where can the folks at home come and see this for themselves? We're performing all over the nation. <sighs> and people can see it for absolutely free, all courtesy of Advance. Isn't that incredible, Jeremy? Yes. Mm. It's unbelievable, Megan. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much for coming. Next time we see you, no doubt, you'll have taken our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. That's all we have time for tonight. Uh. Join us tomorrow when I'll be interviewing the world's most attractive horse. I'm Jeremy Dawson. Horse? Dawson. And I'm Megan <laughs> Wolf. And from all of us. We're going to see a horse tomorrow. That's the ads. Let's get reset for tomorrow, please. Hey, we must stop bumping into each other like this, eh? <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> However, these days, this sort of conversation happens far too often. So, you know, Brad, this past fortnight has really been amazing, but I'm afraid I have something to tell you. <laughs> I'm pregnant. But how could that be? You told me you were on the pill. Not. <sighs> Morning, Dad. Yeah, that's great. Once more.